Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the fifth unit of NCERT Geography, Class Seven. We are going to study about the water cycle and its movement across Earth. So let's get started. You would have seen children playing with paper boats on water puddles during rainy season, but those puddles disappear after some time. Have you ever thought where the water went? Water was evaporated. That is, the heat of sun made the water to evaporate, and it converted the water into water vapor. We have studied in last chapter that when the water vapor rises above surface, it cools down and it condenses. That is, its state converted from gas to liquid form, thus forming water droplets. A large volume of water droplet make clouds. When they are so heavy, they come down in the form of precipitation. Example of precipitation are rain, snow, sleet, etc. Sleet is nothing but a rain falling with some ice. So we know water evaporates from land and water bodies. It becomes vapor, then it cools down, and it get condensed and fall back to land and water in the form of precipitation. These continuous changes and circulations between land, water, and atmosphere is said as water cycle, and it is a very important topic in examination point of view. This is terrarium. It is enclosed with glass wall and it has a layer of humus. That is, it has soil at the bottom. A small and large plants are arranged across. The plants and soil in the terrarium. Releases water vapor. This vapor is then collected on its wall. They get condensed, and again they trickle down towards the soil. Terrariums are self-nourishing as water cycles within. In the same manner, if you take a globe as terrarium, the water circulates in a similar manner. The water which were in existence centuries ago still exists today. That is the water that we irrigate in the field of Haryana would have flowed in Amazon River many centuries ago. The main source of fresh water are ponds, lakes, river, streams, and glaciers. Whereas the oceans and sea water are salty. That is, it has high salinity as it has high amount of dissolved salt. They are the regular table salt that we use for cooking. In a liter of sea water, there are thirty-five grams of salt. That is approximately three point five percent per thousand. Dead Sea, which is in Israel, has three forty grams of salinity per thousand gram. In this sea, the water is dense as the salt content is high. A swimmer can even float in the sea. We know our Earth is a blue planet. And three fourth of Earth is surrounded by water, but why we still have water scarcity? This is the chart that shows the distribution of water around Earth in percentage. You can notice the presence of saline water, that is ninety seven percent, and only the remaining three percent are fresh water. That too, some are in ground level and few on ice cap. We can't consume saline water. The fresh water available on Earth is an invaluable resource, and we should use it with utmost care. Also, we can quench our thirst only by drinking fresh water. Every year on March twenty second, we celebrate World Water Day. The day is celebrated to raise awareness on water conservation. Now, let's see about the movements that occur on ocean. The movements in ocean can be classified into three categories. They are waves, tides, and ocean currents. Waves are formed when wind scrape across the ocean. The stronger the wind blow, the larger the wave will be. When water on ocean rises and falls alternatively, we call them waves. During storm, the wind blow in a very high velocity. That causes a massive destruction. Here, you can recall the Odisha cyclone of 1999 that we read in last chapter. A huge tidal wave is said as tsunami. It's a Japanese word 
which denotes a harbor wave. Whenever there is a tsunami attack, harbor wave destroyed, hence the name was given. Tsunamis are caused due to earthquake, volcanic eruption and underwater landslide. And these can shift enormous ocean water. A tsunami wave can be of 15 meter high and a largest tsunami that was recorded till date has a height of 150 meter. And these waves can travel at a speed of more than 700 km per hour. Tsunami waves hit the Indian Ocean on December 24, 2004 and it created a large hawa. The tsunami attack was a result of earthquake that has its epicenter on Sumatra Island which is on the west of Indonesia. And the magnitude of earthquake was 9.0 at Richter scale which means it's very severe. During this time, the Indian plate went below the Burma plate and there was a sudden movement in sea flow that caused earthquake. The ocean flow was displaced by about 10 to 20 meters and they tilted in a downward direction. Enormous ocean water flowed to fill the gap that was created due to the displacement. This made the water mass to withdraw from the coastal lines of land masses in South and Southeast Asia. When Indian plate settled below the Burma plate, a gigantic water mass rushed back to its coast. This rushing water is tsunami. It traveled at a speed of 800 km per hour, which is equivalent to the speed of modern aircraft. The tsunami waves washed away some of the islands in Indian Ocean. Indra Point, which was set as the southernmost tip of India, was completely submerged after tsunami. We know earthquake move in waveform. If you need a quick revision on the earthquake topic, I have given the link in description. Please recollect the concept if needed. Earthquake epicenter is Sumatra and its wave moved from epicenter towards Andaman and Sri Lanka. Also, its strength got decreased. The speed of wave also got reduced to 70 km per hour from the range of 700 to 900 km per hour. Tsunami waves traveled up to 3 km inward on coastal lands and it killed around 10,000 people in India. And the casualty was 2 lakh around world. In India, the highly affected coastal regions were Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Pondicherry and Andaman and Nicobar Island. We know earthquake can't be predicted. However, a 3 hour notice period can be given for a potential tsunami threat. Early warning systems are across Pacific Ocean but not in Indian Ocean as the seismic activity is less here. A large damage that caused life and property was primarily a result of lack of monitoring, early warning system and lack of knowledge about tsunami among coast dwellers of Indian Ocean. The first indication of tsunami is withdrawal of water from coastal region which is followed by a destructive wave. Next come tide. A rhythmic rise and fall of ocean water twice in a day is called tide. There are high and low tide. When water cover most of its shore by rising to its highest level, we call it a high tide. Likewise, when water recede from the shore and fall to its lowest level, we call it a low tide. Do you know what causes these tides? A strong gravitational pull applied by the sun and moon on the surface of earth creates some fluctuation in water which result in tide formation. Also water of earth which is closer to moon gets pulled due to moon's gravitational force that causes high tides. Also remember moon is closer to earth than sun therefore its gravitational pull is twice that of sun. On full and new moon days the sun, the moon and earth, they all lie on the same plane. And tide will be highest on these days. These are called spring tides. High tides help the ship to reach harbor more easily as water level is close to shore. Also, more fish come to shore during the time of high tides, making the catchment easier. 
Likewise, when Sun and Moon are on opposite sides of Earth, the gravitational pull of Sun and Moon results in making a low tide. As water is pulled in two different directions, the tide is low. Neap tides occur when Moon is on its first and last quarter. Next come ocean current. Ocean current is a stream of water flow on oceans in a definite direction. Ocean currents are warm and even cold. Warm ocean current originate near equator and they move towards pole. Gulf stream is of warm current. Whereas cold currents bring water from polar or higher latitudes towards tropical and lower latitudes. Labrador ocean has cold current. Ocean current influences the temperature conditions of the area. Warm currents brings warm temperature over its surface. Likewise, cold currents bring chillness to the surface. An area where warm and cold current meet is set as a best ground for fishing. Sea around Japan and eastern coast of North America are of this type. Also, this area experiences a foggy weather that makes the navigation difficult. Thus, we have come to an end. Hope the lesson is useful and thank you so much for watching this video. Please do give a thumbs up, also share and subscribe our channel for more content.